So Finish It February is nearly upon us and this year I have one goal and one goal alone and that is to finish the daisy blouse. I've got it all here in this shoe box and I've counted up the ones I've crocheted together. I have 63 crocheted together daisies and I have 373 totals. That means 310 daisies left to crochet together. I've estimated 26 days in February because I also have to sew on the ribbing and also make buttons. That's 12 daisies a day. I have to crochet together 12 daisies a day to finish the daisy blouse in Finish It February. I hope I can do it. Do you think I can do it? Do you know what this is? It's a vintage crochet tool called a daisy maker and I'm going to show you how to use it. So you turn the dial on the back so that the little spokes appear and then on the flat side you wrap the wool around two exactly opposite points two or three times according to the thickness of your wool until all the pins are covered and then you cut a tail of yarn I have found about 20 centimeters works best and thread it through a darning needle and then you have to sew all the petals together by going under two at a time all the way around so that you're always sewing a new petal to the one you've just sewn. Once you've sewn all the petals together you secure the yarn with a knot and then you turn the dial and off the daisy comes and there you have it, a little daisy. And then you just have to make approximately 400 more and crochet them all together to actually make anything useful so if you'd like to see me attempt that make sure you subscribe. So it's day one of Finish It February and trying to finish the 1930s daisy blouse. I'd estimated that I need to do 12 daisies a day in February to finish by the end of February. I managed 14 and 12 took me about an hour. So that's, that's manageable, right? However, what the hell is going on? This is supposed to be a sleeve. I have no idea. What? What? I've got like a right angle. What? I have... Uh, I don't know. Help. Please send help. Day two of working on the 1930s daisy blouse in Finish It February. <laughs> Somehow I've got to make sense of these sleeves. The daisies are joined together by slip stitching in one of the petals and then chaining three before slip stitching in the next petal and so on. You work a pico every three petals to create a square around the daisy to fill in the gaps in between them and to join them together at the corners. I'd added several more daisies to my sleeve when so I've just realised the reason this doesn't make any sense is because I've made a massive mistake. I was supposed to work back to here before I started adding these. So here we go. Bye. Bye daisies. Bye. I cannot believe I didn't think of this. So today is day three of trying to finish my 1930s daisy blouse in the month of February and I've been working on fixing that massive mistake I made previously and I've come to realise something. So my aim has been to join 12 daisies a day each day in February and that should keep me on track to finish by the end of February but of course what I hadn't considered is that just joining the daisies together isn't enough along the bottom. I then have to work back along the top. So that means it's going to take me twice as long to join all the daisies together, meaning I've essentially doubled the amount of work I need to do each day to finish during Finish It February. Day four of trying to finish the daisy blouse in Finish It February and I've gotten to a very strange part of the instructions. So I have now worked back to where I needed to be with that mistake that I made. But now, rather than join the daisies here, as I've been doing for the rows, I'm now having to go this way. I have no idea what's going to happen. We'll just have to follow the instructions and wait and see. So I've only managed to add five daisies and I'm going to have to stop because my neck is killing me. I'm currently doing my neck physio and I'm not coping very well. But I have at least figured out now how this is constructed and how it's going to work. This is the bottom edge and then this bit wraps around to form the body and then the sleeves are like going to be worked out from either side like this and then we're going to work up, make a hole for the neck and do the same thing on the other side. <sighs> 
finally, I know which direction I'm going in. Day five of finishing it February and trying to finish the 1930s daisy blouse and I am massively behind schedule. I've got a lot of crocheting to do. So while I do that, I'll do a little voiceover and tell you the story of this project. So my good friend Engineering Knit sent me some vintage magazines from the 1930s with a bunch of knitting and crochet patterns. Now I love anything unusual in terms of vintage knitting and I was really drawn to this vintage daisy blouse using this daisy maker. So I trolled eBay to find one and I managed to score one for 99p and I started work many, many, many months ago on making this daisy blouse. It's currently my longest running UFO and I've been working on it as part of my stash busting series for over a year now and that's why I'm trying now to finally finish it this Finish It February. So today is day six of Finish It February and trying to finish the 1930s daisy blouse but I've decided I'm taking the day off. I've been working really hard to try and catch up after I made that mistake and honestly I'm already starting to feel a bit burnt out. My hand hurts, my shoulder hurts, I'm starting to get a bit of a headache. And so I'm gonna listen to my body and take some time off. The goal of slow fashion and making our own clothes should never be to produce as much stuff as quickly as possible. It's about creating clothes that we love and value and want to wear so that we take care of them and also have fun. So if you're currently struggling with your making or your hobby this Finish It February, I'm giving you permission to take some time off and do something equally important and rest. So day seven of Finish It February, I had a lovely day off yesterday, time to get back to work. So it's very difficult to get this all in frame for you but you can sort of see how this is coming along. This is a sleeve, this is the body section and that over there is the other sleeve and I'm about to do the shoulder here do the other half of the sleeves and then I come back and do the right shoulder but I've just totaled it up and I've done 104 daisies so even with my day off yesterday I'm ahead of schedule. I can't really believe it. I'm not sure if I did the maths wrong or if I've counted wrong or something but I'm, I'll, I'll take it. It's a win. <laughs> day eight of Finish It February and I'm going out this afternoon. It does happen occasionally but of course Got to get my daisies in before then, haven't I? So, you might remember a few weeks ago I asked for recommendations for if there was such a thing as an interchangeable ergonomic crochet hook set. And I've ordered myself one off Amazon. I've seen mixed things about this one. So let's see what we think. I should say I've got a variety of these crochet hooks that I'm going to be testing over the next couple of weeks and there will be a full length review video coming out over on YouTube. But um, yeah, for now, I'm just going to give each one a fair shot by doing my day's daisies with it. So I started here. This is how far I got with this thing. I wasn't impressed. I swear, it's not what it looks like. It's actually a 3D printed ergonomic crochet hook handle. And on day nine, I finish it February, I'm going to be putting it to the test. I don't even know if I can bring myself to show you. <laughs> so I have redone this last row of daisies three times now, three times. And I was just getting it out to make this video. Guess what? I'm gonna have to redo it a fourth time. I had made a mistake here on the previous row. I'd missed one of the picots to join the corners together. So I ripped this row out. I redid this pico, crocheted all the way back along here, did these daisies, went to join the next one and realized I'd done exactly the same thing at the next pico. So I had to rip it all out again, rip even further back along this row, re-crochet along the top of this row. And I just re-added the daisies can you see what I've done right at the end here? See how it's sort of awkwardly curving round like that? Yeah, that's not supposed to be like that. I have to rip it out and start all over again. On the plus side, I really like this thing. <laughs> So day 10 of Finish It February and trying to finish the 1930s daisy blouse. And you know, so much went wrong yesterday that today it's just about catching up and getting back on track. I've been trying to use all these different ergonomic crochet hooks, but for this 3D printed one, I couldn't find quite the right size for the size hook I'm using. So I had to glue it in, which means I can't now use this hook with my other things that I've bought. So I'm just gonna carry on using this one for now. And I've ordered some more crochet hooks and hopefully they'll 
turn up. So I've managed about four daisies so far today and I have to work back along the top of this shoulder section before I can add some more. So it's quite a lot of work to do. On the plus side, at least I didn't glue this hook into this handle and then find out I hated it. I do actually really like this ergonomic 3D printed one, despite its shape. So I've made it back up here. And this time I have checked that I've done the last row correctly before I start adding my daisies. <sighs> I've done it. 12 daisies done. See you tomorrow. It's official. I've officially run out of yarn on the daisy blouse. And now you may remember from the last time that I ran out of yarn on this project that the yarn I'm using, this Camarosa Ecologic Summer Ould, currently out of stock with the manufacturer and I cannot get it anywhere in the British Isles. I also cannot get it shipped from mainland Europe because a lot of the small independent yarn shops in places like Denmark or Sweden that currently do have it in stock no longer ship to the UK because of Brexit. Brexit. Now last time I was able to get more yarn because I put a call out on Ravelry so I'm hoping somebody will see this video and if you have 50 grams of Camarosa in the colour 2001 Rovide please I will buy it off you. Send me a message on Instagram and I will get in touch with you. If not my only other option is going to be to completely start over. Undo all this crochet so I'm just left with loose daisies and start again crocheting them together with a different yarn that I know I'm not going to run out of. So not being able to carry on with the daisy blouse at the moment leaves me with a bit of a dilemma because I've been looking at my other works in progress. I think I've come to the decision to frog two of them, which only really leaves me with the beekeeper's quilt as an option to work on during Finish It February. But I'm not entirely sure I have any yarn to work on that either. So the projects I've decided to frog are this one, which was an Intarsia 1940s blouse. I'm just not excited to work on it and I also know that I'm just unlikely to wear it. I have one in exactly the same colour palette which I prefer. The other project I'm going to frog is my Victorian corset and that's just because I started this three years ago and there's no way it's going to still fit me. I still want to make a knitted Victorian corset but I'm going to have to start over. So that leaves my Hexipuff quilt and I have found one skein of yarn that I got as part of a yarn swap so I think this is what I'll have to work on for the rest of Finish It February. Day 15 of Finish It February and having paused on the daisy blouse I'm now working on my hexi puff quilt. So I've got my yarn and it needs winding up so it's time to actually get out of bed for the first time this month and go downstairs. <laughs> My one concern having just wound this up is this yarn is supposed to be four ply but it looks a bit thicker to me so I'm gonna have to make a gauge swatch. <sighs> so I have knitted a little gauge swatch and yes I normally get a tension of nine stitches to an inch for a hexi puff and I'm getting seven. I think I can make it work I'm just gonna have to rewrite my pattern. See you tomorrow. As I wait for more yarn to arrive for my daisy blouse thank you so much to everybody who's come through and offered to help. I have some on the way so it's going to get done. It's going to get done. But as I wait, I've been working on my Hexipuff blanket, knitting these little stuffed hexagons to make a quilt out of. Now, the only yarn I have is this one, slightly too thick. And I have adjusted the pattern for stitch gauge, but what I hadn't done was adjusted the pattern for row gauge because weirdly, while the stitch gauge is vastly different, I get the same row gauge. So my hexagons are going to be weirdly squished. So I've done some maths and I'm gonna have to do an uneven shaping rate, which I don't know whether is going to work or not, but as it stands, we're starting this project with yet more frogging. So as I'm rewriting the pattern to make my hexi puffs work with my yarn that isn't quite right, I thought I would talk you through what I'm doing. So this is a spreadsheet that I have written for grading vintage knitting patterns and I've essentially put in all the information and it's spat out how many decreases I need to do, how many times with how many rows in between. But because I've got an uneven shaping rate, I'm not sure whether that means that my angle 
along the hexa puff is going to be uneven. I guess really the only way to see is to try it. So I have to start by increasing every two rows four times and then I increase every three rows three times. So I've done my first set of increases which were every other row and now I'm switching to do one increase every three rows and hopefully we won't end up with like a weird shape happening here. So I finished with my first hexi puff and it is a bit rounded compared to the other ones which are a bit pointier but I think it's gonna work. Excuse whatever's going on here it's night time and I'm getting ready for bed but I have finished my first hexi puff. I've stuffed it and now I just have to graft close the seam. You can do a three needle bind off, but I can't find any other needles this size. So I'm going to do Kitchener Stitch. Kitchener Stitch, it's one of those things I can never remember. I always need a video. Okay, I've got it, here we go. <laughs> knit off, purl on, purl off, knit on. One more stitch on this side than the other. Something went wrong here. Oh well. So yes, one done. I'm hoping I can get six more out of the yarn I've got left and that way I'll get a full flower and the centre of another daisy. Not daisies, hexi puffs. Ugh. Am I gonna have enough yarn? So I've been working away on my hexi puffs and I'm now up to three and I'm loving the way they're looking, but I've only got this much yarn left and I'm not sure if it's gonna be enough. So let's do some maths. If I want seven out of 50 grams, that's about seven-ish. Let's say eight. So I need four more. Why can I do seven times seven in my head but not four times eight? 32. So this needs to be at least 32 grams for me to get enough hexi puffs out of it. Let's go downstairs and weigh it. Oh my god. <laughs> Thank god for that. <laughs> I am starting to struggle a little bit with these hexi puffs. Previously, I've always really enjoyed knitting with very fine needles. These are 2.5 mil, but for whatever reason now, it's really hurting my hands, which is new for me. So I'm having to do much shorter chunks and I can't really figure out how much I can get done in say an hour or something like that. So what I thought I would do is set a timer for 15 minutes and start from scratch with a hexi puff and see how far I get and then hope Hopefully I can schedule in some 15 minute chunks in the day and that will help with my pacing. Okay, here goes. Hmm. Actually, what am I doing? I need my glasses. <laughs> and now I've lost the needles. <laughs> you might have to come back tomorrow to see how far I actually get. <laughs> so this is how far I got in 15 minutes. Obviously it's not a lot of work. I'd say I'm probably about a fifth of the way there. So realistically i'm looking about an hour and a half sort of knitting and finishing and everything per hexi puff so i mean it is what it is recently <laughs> it is what <laughs> i mean it is <laughs> why can't i say that i mean it is was it <laughs> i mean it is what it is i mean it is what it is I'll just have to keep plodding along. I think I figured out how to make this project even better. So somebody suggested on one of my previous videos that instead of doing my uneven decreases in two separate chunks, so I do a block of decreases every two rows and then a block of decreases every three rows, I should alternate them and that should give me a smoother angle rather than the slightly rounded points I'm getting at the minute on my hexi puffs. So I'm going to try it with this one and let's see if it works. So I have no idea whether you can see the difference here, but this is the original one with the uneven shaping and this is the one where I interspersed the number of decreases and it's definitely pointier. So I think I'm calling that a win. I have to be honest, I haven't been being very clear with you all. Somebody commented on one of my most recent videos about the hexi puffs. What are you making with them? And I don't think I've ever actually explained it. So these little hexagons become a quilt and this is a pattern by Tiny Owl Knits and it's known as the beekeeper's quilt. And essentially what you do is you knit loads of these little hexagons and then you join them together like this. You simply tie them together at the corner and I've been arranging mine into these little flower designs and it's my aim to make a grandmother's flower garden style quilt. So at the moment I've only got six flowers ready to go. I have enough hexi puffs to make two more and the hexi puffs I'm working on at the minute as part of Finish It February should be enough to make another one of the outside of these flowers 
and one for the middle. I still have to decide what sort of border, if any, I want to put around each flower. I do quite like the look of the ones that have two colours, but I'm not sure whether I'll have enough yarn for that. So how do you actually make a hexi puff? Well, today I'm going to show you. So you begin with what's called Judy's magic cast on. I don't know who Judy is, but she invented this particular cast on method whereby you get a seamless join. You then work in the round, increasing every other round, hopefully, if you get the right gauge, until your hexi puff is the correct width. For me, that's three and a half inches, but you can make them whatever size you like, really. And then you do the opposite and you decrease until you have the same number of stitches that you cast on. And then before you cast off, you stuff the hexi puff. I'm using Using leftover cushion stuffing from a previous project and then you can either do a three needle bind off or I like to graft mine closed and there you have it a hexi puff so there are two days left in Finish It February and I have two more hexi puffs to make to complete my flower. I'm pretty certain at the rate that I'm going that I will be able to finish by the end of February, but of course, as usual, my main concern is, am I going to have enough yarn? You'll be pleased to hear that my yarn for the daisy blouse should be arriving any day now. I'm not sure whether it's going to get here before the end of February though. I think I am going to carry on with the daisy blouse as my current work in progress because I'm really pleased with how far I was able to get in February and it is a stash busting project so it counts towards my long-term stash busting goals but I am starting to feel the itch of wanting to cast on something new. So today is the very last day of Finish It February and I have one more hexi puff to make. I think I'm gonna have enough yarn. We're so close to finishing something in Finish It February. Let's get started. So this is how far I was able to get in my first 15 minute session. So it's time for a stretch and a rest and I'll see you in a bit. Okay, we're back. Take two. Oh, perfect timing. I'm exactly halfway after my next 15 minutes. Time for a break. Okay, this is the next 15 minute chunk. Time for a lunch break. So I finished the knitting. And that's it, that's the last one. Seven hexi puffs <laughs> finished in Finish It February. And I even have yarn left over.